Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hopefully a relatively short one today. So previously, I had done a video on how I frame corners out in my superior walls. So just like that. And I can link that above if you're interested. And I have touched on in a previous video on how I like to insulate, but I wanted to make a specific video just targeting that issue all on its own because I think it would just be easier for someone who's looking for that to find that information when that's the sole purpose of the video and also because uh, I need content. But that's what I wanna to cover today, how I insulate my superior walls and what are the materials that I use. Let's see how this looks, Let's see if it'll look fat. Now Superior Walls recommends polyurethane foam because that will prevent any issues with moisture within the wall cavities. However, they also say you can have satisfactory results by using typical insulation materials like fiberglass or whatever. But if you're gonna do that, you need to make sure you have decent dehumidification within your basement space or wherever your superior walls are to obviously prevent any potential moisture issues and then therefore mold. Now I like to use something that I think is better than fiberglass, but I also do have whole house ventilation as well as decent dehumidification from my new mini split system. So I'm not real concerned with that moisture issue. I do think I have that pretty well dealt with. But what I like to use is mineral wool insulation because one, it has a little bit better R values than fiberglass typically does, and it is naturally more moisture resistant than fiberglass. So I think it's just naturally a better option in this than fiberglass generally would be. Now the stuff I'm using for this wall and for actually a, a lot of what I'm doing in my basement is the five and a half inch thick or two by six inch thick material that obviously is gonna give me more R value, but that's also the depth of these wall cavities. These wall cavities are six inches deep so they can take that thick of a bat. Now for some areas where it's not exposed to the outside, like lower down the wall in certain areas of my basement, I will use just the three and a half inch material because it being underground, it's gonna be exposed to not quite as cold of temperatures. I figure it's gonna be okay. It's not quite as necessary maybe down there so I could save a little bit of money. But these walls are all fully exposed. This is actually a walkout area here. So I'm doing the two by six depth, this whole space here. And the stuff I generally get is just the standard 16 inch wide bats because they're generally cheaper than a 24 inch wide bat. And also these ones are in stock. The 24 inch stuff I would have to special order and I don't wanna deal with that. If I end up miscounting or misjudging on what I need, which I may actually, <laughs> I'm thinking right now that I don't have enough. So uh, this video might be getting finished tomorrow, but it's what's in stock at my local Menards. I can just go down there, get more if I need it. And it's just that much easier. So that's a big reason why I use this, but also because while these cavities may look wider than a standard 16, because they are, they are not 24 inches on center. So these wall cavities don't fit a typical insulation width. I can't even take a 24 inch and shove this into here. A lot of these, well one, they're not all the same widths, but also at most, I think a lot of them are only 20 inches. So you've got an extra four inches there. That's gonna be hard to shove a 24 inch bat into these cavities. So, and I don't wanna cut off all that excess and just throw this away and have a ton of money laying in my trash. Nobody has that kind of money right now, are you crazy? So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna speed through a lot of this. I will show you a little bit more along the way, some specific things that I do. But before we get started, please hit that like and subscribe. It really helps me out if you do that. And I just wanna say, if you're gonna be insulating, especially with mineral wool, this stuff really sucks. Wear some long pants, wear long sleeves, gloves, and get yourself some kind of dust mask. I gotta find my mask, I don't know where it's at. So I'm gonna go find that, and then we're gonna get started. All right, let's go. One of the best things that I have found for working with mineral wool is a bread knife. Now I wouldn't be using your kitchen bread knife, but just go and get yourself a relatively cheap bread knife and it works great. I've had insulation knives in the past and they just have not worked nearly as well as just a standard bread knife. So that's what I recommend if you're gonna be cutting mineral wool insulation. Okay, so I'm already up here. So something that I do, if you take a look up here, you'll see that there are bolts that hold down the sill plate. Now I've had condensation forming on these bolts before due to the outside being really cold and it being obviously warm in here. So these bolts were getting cold enough from the winter to cause condensation. 
So what I like to do before shoving my mineral wool insulation all the way up here is spray and cover these bolts with spray foam. I try to totally encase them in foam so as to seal them off from any air and hopefully prevent any condensation from forming once the insulation's in here. That should hopefully prevent any moisture from those bolts getting onto this mineral wall insulation. Now it's obviously not that easy to do this one-handed while holding a camera, so these are kind of ugly, but it's spray foam, it's probably gonna be ugly anyways. So now, oops. So now, typically while this stuff is still wet, I'll finish shoving the mineral wool in here and I guess it'll expand however it expands. But hopefully that will mitigate any potential moisture issues from those bolt heads. All right, let's get back to it. So thankfully all of my mineral wool is now in. I hate working with this stuff. It just, it's so irritating. Even covering up with long sleeves, gloves, pants, it still gets on you in some places. It's like there's no way around it. But thankfully I'm done and I only have one thing left to do. If you notice, I leave the mineral wool up about two inches off of the floor. That just has to do with the fact that this is a basement. And while I don't believe I have a very high chance of ever flooding, you can't really rule it out as impossible. So. This is just a little something I do to prevent this insulation from hopefully ever getting wet in case I ever do have a flood. That way it would have to get at least a couple inches deep down here before it would even begin to touch the mineral wool. So what I do in that space is just get some cans of spray foam insulation and I fill it up. That way there's nothing but foam down there and nothing to get hurt by water or moisture or anything like that. So that's it guys, that's how I insulate my superior walls. I'm sure there's better ways to do it. Obviously spray foam is probably the best way to do it. That's what superior walls recommends. It's gonna give you the greatest R values as well as having no issues with moisture whatsoever, but it's also expensive. So that's why I go with this. If you know something better, please let me know in the comments. I still have more to do down here. But other than that, thank you guys for watching. I hope some of you out there got something out of this. If you did, please like and subscribe. It helps me more than you realize. I really need those subscribers if I'm going to keep on doing this stuff. So thanks again, guys. Come back for the next one, and God bless.